What's up everybody? Welcome back to Puns and Tea. My name is Carrie and today, today I have another different one for you. I threw out to all my Instagram peeps, uh, which is just Puns and Tea and Instagram. Um, would you be interested in seeing a video where I film talking about pens that I have personally tried, um, but regret not buying? And overwhelmingly, the answer was, yes please! And so I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna talk about five pens, two of which I have with me now. They're still not mine, uh, but the friend that lent me them in the first place has now re-lent them to me, if that makes any sense. <laughs> um, so I have two of them. I will show you. I'll write some good stuff with it. Uh, the other three I don't have. So I'm gonna start with those ones while I drink a my coffee. I should really be called pens and hot beverages now. <laughs> um, so one of the ones that I regret not buying was the um, Mont Blanc 149. So I have a review of that pen pretty long ago, like a really long time ago in this channel. It was lent to me by a friend of mine and I regret not buying it because he has since sold it and it should have been to me. But I didn't buy it at the time because it was really big. And I'd also tried his um, 147, which is the same size as the 146. And I really enjoyed the comfort level of that pen. And so I was like, no, like, I don't want to buy the 149. It's too big. La la la. I prefer the 146 size. La la la. Well, I mean, <laughs> in all honesty, the reality is I still actually do prefer the 146 size. But. That 149, I don't know, it was just, it was so smooth. The nib is gorgeous. I love the size of it. And that's something that the 146 does not have, of course, it has a smaller nib. Um, and even though, you know, like it, it uh, still writes the same in the sense of like, you still have the same general feel. Um, it It's, I don't know, there's just something about that honking nib. And it just feels like it's the one that got away. And I'm like, dang it, because I prefer buying, especially especially like expensive pens, I prefer buying them secondhand off of people that I know versus like secondhand off of like random because you don't know how they treated them. You don't know like, is the piston in good shape? Is the nib in good shape? Like it, it's always a risk, right? Um, but buying those pens new, especially the 149 is very pricey. So, it's just, it's just the one, you know, like that just sticks in the back of your brain and you're like, dang it, I, I should have done it, but I didn't. And now, you know, I'm sitting here making this video. So maybe it was a good thing. It gave me some content. Um, and then a very similar uh, sort of situation um, was actually with the uh, Aurora 88 Saturno. So that pen really boggles me as to, to why I miss it because I don't typically love the 88. I usually prefer like flat ended pens and the 88 is a more cigar shape, um, which I know the 149 is a cigar shape, but just usually with Aurora, I prefer the Optima, right? Because it has the flat ends. Um, and if you've seen the um, pen collection video that I did, uh, which will be linked somewhere in one of these cards, um, I have a lot of them. <laughs> um, so I usually prefer those, but there was just something about this material that like it, when you see it on pictures, it doesn't do it justice. It's like a, a blue, green, brown, black, dark gray, sort of like combination of everything. And it's just like, I've thrown up some photos actually on my Instagram um, and it still doesn't do it justice. But when you see it, when you hold it and you're like your actual eye holes can get on that pen. Oh, golly, it's so beautiful. Oh, it's so beautiful. Like the, the pen material shines. The depth of material, the chatoyance, like the warmth that comes out of that is just stunning. And it's a it's a cooler tone pen in the sense of like, it's it's primarily like blues and, and things on like the colder side of the color spectrum. 
but that depth and that chatoyance and, and just the feeling it gives you is, is overall like so warming. And it's like, gosh darn it. That one, I don't think I had the option to buy, to be honest. I was lent it um, by like a, a dealer of it. Um, so I don't think I had the option to buy it. I'm sure if I persuade him enough, I probably could have. Um, but I bought the purple uh, Aurora Optima at the same time. So I couldn't swing both um, because they are quite pricey pens. <laughs> so I couldn't swing both. And so I chose the Optima over the 88. And I don't regret that choice because I love the Optima. You can't buy that color uh, combination anymore. Um, but I just... I miss the Saturno. I will probably eventually pick one up down the road. If anyone in Aurora is listening to me, please make an Optima out of the um, Saturno material and then just like hook a girl up, please. <laughs> um, so definitely that one. So we've got the Mont Blanc 149, the Aurora 88 Saturno. Um, and then I'll show you one I do have. Do, 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 is this guy right here. So this is the Platinum 3776 Celluloid. This is actually the um, calico finish, which I quite enjoy. Um, I was lent this one, like I said, again by a friend. Um, and I will show you a little, a little writing sample um, of this bad boy. I have a whole bunch of the 3776, but I don't have any of the celluloid versions. And there's just something about the material to celluloid that the resin versions don't have. It's a lot smoother um, to feel. It, it's slightly narrower. I have done a comparison video between the um, celluloid versions and the resin version that you can check out on my channel as well. Um, because there are quite a few differences. They're subtle. They're very subtle differences, but they make a difference um, to the point where it just, it steps it up a little bit. So the, the 3776, what I love about it is it's a fantastic pen. It's still one of my favorites. It constantly flip-flops between that and the Aurora Optima. Um, I always recommend it to people. It's a relatively inexpensive pen, the 3776, um, especially if you get it from like a Japanese seller or something like that. You can usually get them for about a hundred bucks. These ones you can't. Celluloid is definitely more expensive, but if you like this style, um, I always would recommend it and I wish that this was my pen. Um, it is on my list of things to buy. I haven't fully decided whether I want this finish or the tortoise finish. I lean back and forth both times. Um, but I just, oh, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. I never thought I'd say that about a pen, but it's so pretty. Uh, it just feels amazing. The only thing that I don't like about these ones as much as like the regular ones is that the converter sits directly on the back. So right where my finger is, that line that you can see, that's the entire converter. There's only like a little knob that comes out of here. So when you're um, wiping the pen off when, after you ink it up and you're wiping it off to get the excess ink off, I always feel like the converter is gonna pop off. I don't have a worry about it just like this because I'm not putting any pressure on the converter. Um, and of course, when you have the pen um, done up, you're, you're not gonna <laughs> knock it off or anything like that. But that's the only slight downside to that pen. So I'm definitely glad that I was able to get that pen uh, back from a friend of mine so I could show it to you. Another one that I have spoiled for you guys on my Instagram channel um, is the Sailor Pro Gear Imperial Black. This was actually the um, picture of like the finial that I posted to the channel asking if you guys wanted to see this video. So I hope it's worth it. Um, this one I love. It's a stealth pen. It is the Imperial Black. So it is all black. Um, all the trim is black. You know, even the inside of the pen is black as well. 
Um, the only thing that isn't is the converter. <laughs> that part is still steel, but it doesn't really matter in the sense that like you've, you've got the pen down up, you can't see it anyways. And uh, this pen I love. Sailor pens write really, really well. Um, I've used many sailors, I've owned a couple, and they always write really well, and I don't have a problem with it. But what I like about this over uh, a lot of other sailor pens is that it's a little bit different. So, one, it's a pro gear, so Bob's your uncle on that one. Uh, it, it fits my aesthetic very nicely. Um, and I just love the fact that it is stealth. I like the black versus like, you know, shiny black. Um, I don't own any other stealth pens. Um, and I really, really dig the color. I love the finial on top. Like I said, the nib writes phenomenally. Um, and it's just, I don't know, there's something about the feel of it. It is just like, uh, you know, plastic pen essentially. There's, there's nothing like fancy as far as like the material goes. Um, I have heard rumors that if you don't use like sailor inks with this pen, um, that it can take off the finish to the nib. Um, of course, this isn't my pen, so I don't know. Um, he has had it for a while and it still looks flawless to me and I don't think it's been used exclusively with Sailor ink, um, but I can't say with certainty. So if that is the case, that is a little bit of a bummer, but I really, really, really like the look of this pen. The problem with this pen and the reason why I don't own it is because it's difficult to get at a reasonable price in Canada. There are a couple of retailers that um, sell this pen in Canada, but it's like, upwards of $700 for this. And I think that's ridiculous. So, you know, you have to buy it from like a Japanese seller or something like that. Um, and they're just, it's not available very often. Anytime I've ever looked into it, it's not in stock or it's like back ordered for like four or five months. And it just never seems like I'm able to get my hands on this bad boy at a decent cost. Um, I'm not paying 700 bucks for it. Um, and that's Canadian pricing, of course. So this always just seems like the pen that I never get the chance to own. So I'm very, very happy that I have it back again. And the fifth pen that I regret not buying uh, was one that I got to use at a pen show. It was the Pelican M1000. Uh, it was the um, Rodden version. That one literally broke my heart because it was so gorgeous. It was a fine nib, but if you've ever used Pelican, you know that it writes a little bit bigger. So the fine was a little closer to a medium. The flow was very wet and the M1000, the difference with that nib is just like mind blowing. So I've used the M205, the M400, 600, 800, 805s, 405s, 605s, like I've used a million different Pelicans, but the M1000 just is a step above the rest. The nib is so bouncy. It actually has a little bit of give to it. So you can flex a little bit, a little bit is not a flex pen, <laughs> but you can flex a little bit with it. You get that spring, which a lot of other Pelican pens don't have. They are a stiffer nib typically, but the M1000 is just like, oh yeah, it just goes and it makes you want to dance. And that pen was glorious, but it was so expensive. It would have been like 3,200 bucks, which is actually a really good price for that pen. But because it was like rotten and it has like handmade and everything like that, but, uh, I just, I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't spend that much money. I was like, that is like, it's like three months, not quite three months, but almost three months rent. Like I just, oh God, I just couldn't do it. I wanted to so bad. I wanted to so freaking bad, but I couldn't. And that isn't just another one that boggles my mind because it's like, you have to balance like, is, is the price worth it to something that you're gonna have for the rest of your life? Like I could have that pen for another like 50 years. It is by far the most expensive pen that I've ever thought about purchasing. Of course I didn't, um, but it was just like, oh, it's so pretty. 
I do really want to get an M1000. Just I, I want to wait for the right finish because the um, M805 like Streisman or however you want to pronounce that, they did recently make into the M1000 and I love that finish. But I have the M800 or 805 with that finish. So it's like, do I want to get it the same finish in the M1000? I don't know. I don't like the black finish where it's just, that's it. It's just black with a little ink window. I don't like that one. And the only other really option is the green one or one of the special editions where they make it like a bajillion dollars. So I don't know. All five of these pens I've had the opportunity to purchase. Um, like I said, this one, the Sailor Pro Gear, the opportunity just seems to be like keeping to slip my grasp. Every time I go to purchase something like that, it's just never available. It's never in stock. It's never here. It's too expensive, all that kind of stuff. Um, and the uh, celluloid versions of the Platinum 7, 3776, they're starting to even become harder to find. The material is much more limited than, you know, a resin pen. So eventually they're not going to be able to make them anymore. It's definitely becoming more difficult to find. Um, I really regret not picking up that 149. Um, just because like I said, it, it was a one-time opportunity. I passed on it and I missed it. Um, and that's pretty much the same with all of these. Um, so hence the old, I regret not buying <laughs> uh, series. So I'm curious to know like what pens have you passed on in the moment and then come to regret later in life. Um, that happened to me actually with the um, Parker Duofold uh, Ivory Centennial. Um, I was lent that by a friend, the same friend actually that lent me the 149, and I fell in love with that pen. I absolutely fell in love with it, and I did actually end up buying it. I bought it off of Amazon from the UK, um, and then it shipped here, of course, and I'm really glad I did. Oh man, I'm really glad I did, because otherwise this would have been on this uh, channel, because that finish is now discontinued. They've upgraded, or changed, or modified, or whatever, and now the ivory one comes completely different, so, I'm very glad that I bought it when I did um, because otherwise it definitely would have been on this channel. So what about you guys? Is there any pens that um, you know you regret not buying, you were given the opportunity to, you didn't, and now it's just bugging you? Uh, I'm curious, am I the only one? I find it hard to believe that I'm the only one, but I wanna know. Um, but guys, that's about it for me. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, smash the bell if that's something you feel like doing. And um, I'll see you next time. As always, bye. I'm gonna make the coffee because I only got four hours sleep. And I need the coffee so I don't have to go to jail.